Hi everyone, this is Handy from Japaniki. Um, first, I have a small announcement to make. Um, Victor has decided to stop doing uh, videos because he doesn't have time to. So that's why we didn't have any videos up for like almost two months. And I'm really sorry about it. And I'm, I'm gonna start doing videos again all by myself, but you'll probably see Victor again in other video. Uh, a lot of you ask about how it is to study in Akamukai, so I'm gonna explain how it is for the first uh, three months. Victor and I both begin in the beginner level, like almost everybody, in the afternoon class. Um, just a quick thing, they tell you on Google Nihon website that you can choose uh, the AM class or the PM class, but in reality almost everybody is in the PM class. I know a few people who were lucky enough to go in the AM class, but almost everybody in the beginner level is in the afternoon class. So yeah, sorry to break your hope, but this is the reality and I wanted to tell you about it. So yeah, so the first month um, is uh, like a s the slow pace uh, level, so you learn one lesson in three days. So. In one month you do six lessons, so as you must know if you read on Gogonyo, Minna no Neongo is the book uh, you receive and that we study in Hakamokai. I hate this book actually, but yeah, anyway, so if you, this is level six, so you, this is what you do um, in the first month. So basically you learn hiragana and katakana, no kanji in the first month and uh, at half, so you learn kanji and hiragana. This is the kind of sheet you receive. You see I did it well. You could it much that. And that you have to do almost every day. It's not really long to do and if you already know hiragana and katakana, it's not a problem. The first month will be really easy, like for me it was really really easy. Uh, if you don't do hiragana and katakana, it will be harder. A lot of people didn't know hiragana and katakana um, struggled a lot. Um, but most of the people in my class already knew hiragana at least, so I would suggest you to at least know hiragana and katakana. It will be really useful and it's quite easy to learn by yourself. At the end of the month you have a test, so they um, separate people once again, you change class. So they separate people between the quick paced class and the slow paced class. So um, the quick uh, the quick class is like uh, two days for one lesson, and the slow paced one is three days for one lesson. So I'll show you what we study with. So of course we use Minano Nihongo, and the exercise everything is almost everything is taken on Minano Nihongo. So yeah, the, this is the thing. We received this one in the first class. This is the vocabulary book. So you have to do um, like each uh, lesson. Just search. You have to search the vocabulary word and write it in your own language. So basically, you can write anything, and they don't know if they don't know your mother tongue. So I write it in French because. Well, that's my mother tongue, obviously. So yeah, you have to remember to do it before um, each new lesson you learn. So, and if you do it, they're, they're gonna check it in the beginner one. They check everything. So they check it every time and you have this little stamp every time. It's very cute, right? So, um, this is a katakana book we also receive in the first um, month. So basically it's katakana. No, we we'll receive it in the new class actually after the the beginning of the second class. So this is katakana book. So basically image and katakana that we do almost every day. And this is the kanji book. This is the for first one. So basically it's like that. The, you have the kanji place to write and words don't you can see but words 
and phrase the sentences that go with it, each word. So we basically learn the kanji not necessarily by itself, but how it's written in a word like, for example, we just learned shukudai, so we learn the first kanji, shuku and dai, but we kind of learn them together. I actually didn't like this method at first, but then I think it's better because you remember more the kanji than just by itself because most sometimes the kanji by itself has a really weird meaning that you don't really use like you always use it as a pair instead of by itself so I think it's quite great so this is the kanji book and this is the kanji denshu book so basically what you have to do each time you will learn a kanji which is basically every day but sometimes we don't it depends so you have to write each word that goes with the kanji that I showed earlier at least in time so this is what it looks like kanji, kanji, kanji and they check it if you do it of course it's, they say it's not a no more but you have to do it basically I, but actually it depends on the teacher one of my friends te uh, his teacher doesn't check at all Victor teacher check like every day and mine check on t once in a while like about maybe two weeks interval so basically I like some people doesn't don't do it but I think for me it's a great way to practice and to memorize it so I do it mostly by my for myself more but if you skip one day like it won't be terrible like it's not a no more, they don't count you on this but they want you to do it so and every day you get kanji test and katakana test so this is what it looks like um, so you have one part, it's um, the pronunciation of the kanji so if we have like here that one that I did a mistake um, here gakuse and then you have the writing one, you have the hiragana and you have to write the kanji. So this is what it is. And then we have the katakana test, like the teacher say 10 katakana words. And you have to write it and then we have a bit of a bumpo grammar. So for the particle, which is always a pain. But yeah, so we do this every day. In the first uh, level, the beginner one actually you go to level uh, to lesson 21 in Vinam Nuniongo so we just finished it aujourd'hui we just finished it today so basically we did all of this from Vinam Nuniongo it's quite a lot um, I think everyone passed the test at the end in my class though but some people do it again and from from the beginning if you don't pass the test you have to go to do it all again all over again I didn't want to do it so of course I was okay but yeah you have the, the big test at the end of um, the term to know if you go to uh, next level or if you do it again you have um, a kanji and katakana part a listening part and a grammar part so it's not it's not too hard like the first exam actually I thought it was okay also um, you will have two teachers in your class one for um, Monday Wednesday and Friday and the other is Tuesday and Thursday so I think I think Akamonkai is pretty a pretty good school actually I really enjoy it here and I enjoy the school and the place and yeah it's nice and if you worry about having not enough free time because of homework I can, for now, can only tell for beginner one which is at the easiest level of course but I, if I want to go out I can like if I, I want to go eat and go to Shibuya for an evening I, I can go and I'll be okay to do my homework and stuff of course for me it's easy and some people really str struggle with it but if you have already ba basic Japanese level I, I don't think beginner one will 
like you will have too much homework that you can well, never be able to go out or something and even the weekend we don't sometimes we don't even have homework like we don't have it every, mostly every day but sometimes we don't and sometimes weekend we don't even have homework at all either so I go out every weekend and so I have free time I don't care of course if like the more advanced you go the more homework and exam and the harder it gets so you have to do study more which is normal in everything so of course I think maybe later you will have less free time but I wouldn't worry about the free time for like at least the first three or six months because I have my roommate is in the beginner two right uh, right now she just finished and she still had time to uh, to go out as well of course she already knew a lot of Japanese but she she had the time to go out as well so I don't think you will have too much or more so you can you can go out if you worry about this about Akamokai because they say it's a really intensive school so yeah uh, I don't know if I did I talk about everything you wanted to know or something like that if you have other questions please tell me in the description box below I might do a blog post about this I, about this I don't know yet but hopefully you will find this video informative and I hope it convinced you to come to Hakamonkai because it's a great school and see you later Hi everyone, we're in uh, Shinjuku and we're going to the Sailor Moon Cafe It's super excited! 